God's Word Speaks Healing is a unique audio compilation on which Pastor Benny Hinn reads promises of health and wholeness from throughout the scriptures as beautiful instrumental music from his favorite healing songs and hymns plays in the background. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. You can have God's Word Speaks Healing as a digital download for a gift of $8. Call, write, or order your copy of this faith-building volume online today. Precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. The subject I want to minister on is not for everybody. It's for those of you who are mature in the spirit, of course. But I want you to grasp this message. How to walk in the spirit. And the time has arrived. How to walk in the spirit. Um, how does it work in, in your life? Now, <clears throat> please hear this. I want you to, to listen to this. The minute you step out of the old life, the minute you come into the new life. You literally begin to walk in a world that has no limits. The flesh has limits. The spirit has no limits. So I want you to understand that the minute you're, you're born again, you begin to live a life that has no limitations. No limits. Say no limits. No limits. One more time. No limits. Now you have to, to, to really receive that in your spirit. Receive that. You cannot ever believe there's limits in your life. There are limits only in the flesh. There are no limits in the spirit. Because... Limitation is known only in the old life. <clears throat> the minute you're saved, uh, the limits disappear. And in Jesus, no limits. It, say, in Jesus, no limits. Jesus. But you know, now I'm having you repeat that because. I want you to grasp the truth. Get it in your heart, in your spirit. Because we have been so accustomed to limits. Limited strength. Limited knowledge. Everything is limited when it comes to the mind, the old life. The new life has no limits. And the, and the word of God tells us. That we should never think about life the same way again. We will never think about life the same way we used to think about life. The way you used to see life has got to be canceled. Now you have to see life brand new. Because the scripture says... In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21, 22, 23, all things are yours. That's no limits. I want to I wanna read that portion because it's quite dynamic. It's quite powerful. It's, to be honest with you, it's life-changing if you grasp the truth of it. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21, Therefore let no man glory in men, 
For all things are yours, whether Paul, Apollos, Cephas, or Peter, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. Now, that's no limit in any world you can imagine. Because he says, everything is yours, everything is yours in life or death, present or the future, all things are yours. Now, that is a big one. To grasp that, it takes a long time to really think about this one. I have no limits, none in the spirit, whether I was alive or dead, whether it was past, present, or future, no limits because all things are yours. And now verse 23, and ye are Christ's and Christ is God's. Wow. That means everything Jesus walks in, you walk in. No limitations. Your life from here on will have, will have no past reference. Don't ever say anything about, well, I don't do it the way I used to do it because what you used to do is canceled. <laughs> it's not about the old life. It's about life. I don't have an old life. It doesn't exist. Because the minute I became a Christian, I became a new creation in Christ Jesus. Everything old and all things are passed away. I cannot, I cannot identify with them. All things are new. I have to start thinking with that new way of thinking. Say, all things are mine. All things are mine. No, limits. no limits. No limits in my past, no in my past. Present, present, or future. future. No, limits. no limits. Now that's the walk of the Spirit. That's what it means on walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit means you walk in a world that has no limitations. How you get there? Ah, ha, ha. We're getting there now. I'm going to show you. You have to begin obeying God. You have to act the life of the new creation. You see, um, unbelief depends on feelings. Faith depends on the promise. Not the feeling. It's, uh, it's the promise of God. That's what I live for. I live in. I walk in. I look at the promise. Now something happened here. When Israel came to the Red Sea. They saw the Egyptians behind them, the sea before them. Moses did not see the Egyptians or the sea. He saw God. When you see God, you don't see the past. You don't see even the future. You see God. Now, Israel saw the Egyptians back there. And the sea there, and they said, ah, we're dead. In Exodus 14, let's all go there. Exodus 14. Uh, doctor, would you mind reading that for me? Just help me preach a little bit. You've got a microphone right there somewhere, don't you? Yeah, right there. Okay, now we're, we're going to read Exodus chapter 14. We're going to read verse 15, 16, and then we're going to jump over to verse 21. And you're going to see something so powerful. Because the nation of Israel saw the Egyptians and the sea. But Moses did not see the Egyptians or the sea. Because he was living the new life. 
So it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Now to human logic and feelings, that word makes no sense. To go forward means to drown. Makes no sense. When God says, come on, move on. Don't look at this. What are you doing praying? Start walking. Those who live the old life are, 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 are going to say, wait a minute. If I go forward, I die. If I go backward, I die. And God says, no, you won't. Because you don't have anything behind you or in front of you. You have to see the promise. Not the Egyptians or the sea. So when God said to him these words, he said, what are you doing praying now? Stretch the rod. The minute he said stretch the rod to human logic, to the human mind and feelings, the word of God makes no sense. But to you believers who are living the new life. Yeah, yeah. Aha. The old man says, to go forward, I drown. To go backward, I get killed. <laughs> Moses did not see the Egyptians, did not see the ocean. He saw the presence of Almighty God. He walked into the presence of God. Hold. He walked into the presence of God. He walked into the realm of the spirit. He walked into the promise on the promise yeah. and his mind had nothing to do with it. it. His feelings were detached at that moment. He, he knew, he knew, he knew all that I'm looking at does not exist. There is no army behind me. And there's no ocean in front of me. All that's around me, God. All I see is God. Are you people listening? All I see is God saying, walk on. Get in there. You know, um, in Numbers 13... And Numbers 14 tells the story of when Israel came to the border of Canaan, a place called Kadesh. And Moses sent 12 spies. Now, very, very interesting thing when you look at the, at the scripture. So you mind, let's go to Numbers 13, Pastor. And I want you to pay, pay attention to Verse 25 through 33 of Numbers 13. Because these individuals did not see God. And when they came back, they did not even mention him one time. All they saw is land, fruit, and giants. They didn't see God at all. Didn't even mention his name one time. When they came back and reported what they saw, not one time did they say, the Lord, except Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb were the only men who talked about the Lord when they came back in the report. The ten spies didn't say the Lord one time. Now, I see, I'm going I'm to show you something. But let's first read Numbers 13 and Dr. Dan there, uh, Pastor, read verse 25 through 33, will you? And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel under the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. Now they saw the land, they saw the fruit, Keep going. 
And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites. The Amor Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we now, are... Now, now, if you read what those other people said, they never mentioned God one time. All they talked about is the land, what's in it, and the giants, and the impossibilities. Wow. They never said God one time. All they said, yeah, yeah, we saw the land, we saw the fruit, we saw... But never one time did they say, we saw the Lord... It's not about the land you see. It's about the Lord you see. When you see the Lord, the Lord, it changes everything. So now Caleb stills the people and said, let's go up at once and possess the land because we're able to overcome it. He had a different vision of the land. Yeah. He didn't say anything else, but he saw God. He saw God. Greg, that's the difference. God was more real to him than the land. God was more real to him than the fruit of the land. God was more real to him than the giants in the land. Because he said, I saw God and he's bigger than the giants. You saw the giants and yourself as grasshoppers. I saw God. He's bigger than all the giants. The minute he saw God, he didn't care about the giants. The, the giants were no longer giants in the presence of God. When you see the presence of God, you don't see the giants. You're a man of the spirit. When you see God, you don't see the ocean. You don't see the Egyptians behind you. You see God. He's bigger than all of them. Our God is a big God. He's a big God. Don't limit him to your mentality. Don't limit him to your feelings and emotions. Don't limit him to the way you feel about yourself and your life. He's a big God. Live in the spirit, you see God, you don't see the situation. You see the covenant you're walking in, you don't see the situation. So, now the Bible says, keep going, sir, verse uh, 31, please. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Because all they saw is the people, they never saw the Lord. Let's keep going, verse 32. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched under the children of Israel, saying... The land which we, through which we have gone to search, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Wow. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Now, here's the problem. When you live that old life, you will see... What the devil is, is showing you and the way you see yourself is, is the way the devil sees you. They said we were in our own sight, grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Because people that do not live in the spirit, the way they see themselves is the way the devil sees them. Ah, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things are passed away. I am his righteousness. I am his righteousness. Say that. Say it again. Say, I am holy. I am chosen. I am loved. I am accepted. I have all wisdom and knowledge. Now, that's what the, what the Bible says about you. You're already there. That's the world you live in. Stop looking at what your eyes are telling you is real because it's not real. Uh, yeah. You live in the spirit, not the natural. You are a supernatural being. Say that. You are what? 
And as a supernatural being, you see God. You see the promise. You see the covenant. Not the Egyptians. Not the ocean. Not the giants. Amen. You see God. Now, Numbers 14, verse 1 and verse 1 through verse 5. Please, Pastor Dan, one more time. And all of the congregation lifted up their voice and cried unto the people. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt. Think about the negativity. All that bondage comes back in them. Because they're not seeing God anywhere. Yeah. Verse 3. Or would God we had died in this wilderness. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword. That our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt. Verse 4 and 5, please. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Now, look at what, what happens from verse 6 to verse 9. Quickly, please. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephthah, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only do what now? Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. We'll eat them for lunch, he said. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Look how often he mentions the Lord. Now listen. The Bible declares in verse 22 something stunning. Numbers 14, 22, it says, Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles. Now, wait a minute. Those ten spies saw the glory and the miracles, and they never saw God. He said they saw the glory and they saw the miracles, but they never saw me. Yeah. Glory is not enough. Yeah. Miracles aren't enough. Because you can't walk in them. God, you can walk in. He's the one you walk into. He is your new creation. He is the word. He's the word. Ah, uh -uh, you didn't hear what I said. He's the word. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Pastor Benny Hinn invites you to join over 3 million Facebook users around the world who like Benny Hinn Ministries. Don't miss this opportunity to receive inspiring messages, scriptures, teachings, announcements, and Pastor Benny's live teachings on Facebook. Like and follow Benny Hinn Ministries today. Look who's with me, my dearest friend, <laughs> Marilyn Hickum, I have known for many years. And she wants to talk to you and pray with you. And I would just like to pray about your prosperity and sowing seed at this time, how important it is. So I know seed, when I've sown seed, that's when I get harvest. And I want you to have a big harvest. So, Father, I just pray for everyone who's looking at me right now. You will put in their heart the seed they should sow, but not just sowing seed, but expecting harvest. I ask this in Jesus' name. I thank you and I rebuke the enemy that would steal or devour anything from us. I believe our best days are ahead and our worst days are behind. So I'm going to ask you in Jesus' name to say goodbye, bad days. Amen. I want to ask you a question. Okay. Why is giving important? Biblically. Biblically, giving is important because if you want to harvest, and he teaches that, he did it himself, he gave his son and harvested us, it's a principle that is only going to bring blessing in your life 
It's, I know when I first started to travel, I went to a church and they received an offering for my radio, or just a little ministry, and they didn't give it to me. And they, I called them and they said, oh, we'll send it, we'll send it, but they never sent it. And so the Lord said to me, you know, if you give it, just give it to them in your heart, then you can have a harvest mm. because it's a gift. It's not something owed you. So I said, okay, Lord, I just sow that in them. That was the beginning of my radio ministry. I think that was a very important seed. So giving to me is the only way to have harvest and to reap. When people give to the Lord, you talked about expectation. Why is that so important to expect it? Because faith has to be involved. You know, faith pleases God. Everything we do, we get born again because of faith. You give in faith and expect in faith. Do we expect the harvest to come back within a certain time, or is that up to God? I think that's up to God. You know, I would like to say time limits, but I haven't really seen that. And we sowed my husband's retirement. That was $300,000. And that, God said for me to do it, that he would take care of me. And my son-in-law said, I don't want you living in our basement. He was teasing me. But I sowed that seed, and that's when God opened my biggest doors. Why so many Christians today are in trouble financially? I because they don't they don't sow. They don't sow in faith. They don't speak the word over it. They don't expect a harvest. I sow expecting and I receive. Why do we speak the word? Why must we speak the word over it? Because the word is the faith part of it. And so when we speak the word, the word cannot return void. That's very important. Well, let's give that way. Listen, I've seen this work in my own life. And I'm glad that dear Marilyn said the same thing because when I have given to the Lord over the years, and I've learned much from Oral Roberts about oh, yeah. expectation, the harvest. Right. He said to me one day, he said, how many times did the Lord Jesus say give in Luke 6 through 8? I said, one time. He said, how many times did he say receive? I said, I don't know. He said, look at that again. Mm. And I could not see it till he showed it to me. It shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall man give to your bosom. Seven times the Lord focuses on the harvest. So I want to pray with Melon again yeah. that God will give you a harvest. Father, in Jesus' name, it's your power, Lord. Bless your people with a harvest as they sow today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, and God love you, and be looking for the harvest. It's on the way.